So a continuation from yesterday when you're filling out this unit circle, remember that you you don't have to put the um, the degrees on the outside and radians on the inside, but it's uh, sometimes helpful too. And if we recall, when we started yesterday, remember this is our standard, our initial side and our standard position starts from there. So as I rotate around one time, that zero degrees as I go all the way around becomes 360 degrees. And 360 degrees is 2 pi radians, which means 180 degrees is pi radians. Okay? And from there, if this is pi and this is a 30 degree angle, that makes this 30 is 1 sixth of 180, so 30 would have to also be 1 sixth of pi here, so pi over 6. And then you're just counting from there. So if you need help with these patterns, if that's 1 pi over 6 at 30, then 60 is 2 pi over 6. 90 is 3 pi over 6. 120 is 4 pi over 6. 150 is 5 pi over 6. And 180 is 6 pi over 6, which is just pi. 210, so counting every 30, 7 pi over 6. 240, 8 pi over 6. 270, 9 pi over 6. Yeah, we will in a minute. 300, 10 pi over 6, and 330, 11 pi over 6. And then 360 is 12 pi over 6, or 2 pi. So as Rachel just pointed out, yeah, you should really be simplifying all those. So I'm, I waited till the end to simplify here. So 1 pi over 6, 2 pi over 6 becomes pi over pi over 3, that means every 60 degrees is a pi over 3. That's 1 pi over 3. So 60 more is 120, which is 2 pi over 3, which is what 4 pi over 6 reduces to. And then another 60 would be 180. It's 3 pi over 3, which is pi. And then another 60 is 240. So that would be 4 pi over 3, which is what 8 pi over 6 reduces to. And another 60 is 300. So that's 5 pi over 3 which is what 10 pi over 6 reduces to. And then another 60 is 360, which is 2 pi. So notice I was able to kind of check my work by doing that. Okay, bless you. So that's 0. This is halfway between 0 and 90, which is 45. And 45 is 1 fourth of 180, so that would mean the radians would be 1 fourth of pi, or pi over 4. So 1 pi over 4, the next 45 is 90. 2 pi over 4, which is 3 pi over 6, which is pi over 2. 3 pi, or excuse me, 1 pi over 4, 2 pi over 4, 3 pi over 4 right here, which is 135. And then 4 pi over 4, which is 180. And then 5 pi over 4, which is 225. And then 6 pi over 4, excuse me, right here, which actually also reduces to 3 pi over 2. And then 7 pi over 4, which is 315. Those are your patterns to find your radians. Any questions there? Now, recall from yesterday when we talked about coordinates, we started here knowing that this has an xy value. If this is a one unit circle, this whole length is one, this has an xy value of one, zero. And if that's one, zero, remember if the way you can remember to do this is if you can take 
and recall that this is root 4 over 2. That equals 1, right? Root 4 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And this is root 0 over 2 because root 0 is 0 divided by 2 is 0. From there, to find all these coordinates for this quadrant, you just count down from root 4. So it's root 3 over 2, root 2 over 2, root 1 over 2, and root 0 over 2. And then from root 0, you count up. So root 0 over 2, root 1 over 2, root 2 over 2, root 3 over 2, and root 4 over 2. And then after you get them all in, you reduce. We know that reduces to 1, that reduces to 0. Root 3 doesn't reduce, but root 1 does. It becomes 1 half. So root 1 is 1, 1 over 2 doesn't reduce. This one reduces to 1 half. And root 0 is 0. Root 4 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 0, 1. Questions on that pattern? Yeah. Can I can I show you that individually? I don't want to draw up all the triangles right now like we did yesterday, but I'll come over there and show you how they're drawn in. Okay. Um, so from here, to find these others, you're just reflecting, right? Remember, this is a positive, positive coordinate, meaning x is positive, y is positive. This is negative, positive, negative, negative, and positive, negative. For those of you confused, this is x, y. That's what those values are, okay? So as I... As I take all my positive x values in this quadrant and move them over here, they all become negative x values. So as I reflect this one over to there, that is now negative root 3 over 2. However, y is still positive. And this one reflected over there is now negative root 2 over 2. But y is still positive. And then this one reflected over here is negative one half and y is still positive. Okay, reflect it over, negative one and zero. Good? Okay, and then you can reflect down. So this one, all your x's are negative, but now your y's are negative as well. Reflect that one down. All your 45s, remember, are just root 2s over 2s. So the more you do this, the easier you'll just kind of remember that your, your coordinates of 60, your x values for those coordinates of 60 are your 1 halves. Your coordinates of 30s are root 3s over 2. You think of 30 root 3. If 30 only goes into it, you have a root 3 on top for your cosine value. Okay. Some different tricks you'll find. This one coming down here now, you have positive and negative. So positive 1 half and negative root 3 over 2. Coming down here, positive and negative and here. Positive and negative. Then we don't want to forget this is still 1, 0, and don't want to forget this one is 0, negative 1. Okay. Very good. So, Hallie, when you're talking about the triangles, were you talking from here to here? You're talking about the 30 degree triangle? So that would be a 30 degree triangle. Down here? 
yeah, there that that might make a little more sense after do reference angles today. Okay, so let's see if we can still help you on that afterwards. Okay, so the other thing we talked about were our were our uh, triangles that we drew in this first quadrant. I'm going to start with the 30 degree triangle. Okay, remember this is a one unit circle, meaning all radii or the radii for this is one. So r equals one. All right. What is this length right here? Yeah, that's equal to one half. It's your y value. So your y value equals one half. What's this length here? That's your x value, and it is the coordinate for x is root three over two. We're going to use that information here with our first piece that we're expanding today. So if we just focus in on this one triangle right here, understanding that y is one half, x is root 3 over 2. Okay, let me pause there. Are there any questions on the unit circle? Okay, does everyone re recall what we said y was equal to yesterday? What's another name for y when we're dealing with the unit circle? Hey, let's um let's go back to this piece. Let me cover this up for a minute and cover that up for a minute. Pretend we don't know how to find the special angles. What trig function would I need to use if I had just a 30 degree angle and I was trying to find that? Sine. This is opposite over hypotenuse. So sine. So y is equal to the sine of 30 is equal to the opposite, or y, over, what's the radius, or the hypotenuse? Well, it's 1. Okay, so we could write it like that, which really, if I just kind of zoom into that, that, that really just means y equals sine 30 when we're dealing with the unit circle. Okay, now I'm going to leave that 1 there because we're going to use that here in a minute. Okay, and if I'm dealing with this side, down here, so if we now put an x here, which of the trig functions am I using? Cosine. cosine. So x is also equal to the cosine of 30, which is equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse, or x over 1. And once again, I am going to put that 1 there, because we're going to use that here in a minute. Okay? How many are with me still? Okay. Just so we can make this connection here in a minute, if I wanted to find tangent, tan is equal to, yeah, it's equal to opposite over adjacent. And opposite, in this case, we have now called this equal, we've called this sine, and we've called this cosine. So really, opposite means sine. And adjacent means cosine. Now I'm putting theta, which really means this angle then would become a theta. Okay, But tangent is just sine over cosine. Okay. So that was a quick review of everything yesterday. All right. Now, utilizing that, I want you to go to your student journal. Open it up to page page 252 keep your keep your unit circle that you had handy we're going to use part of this page all right page 252 how can you use the unit circle to define trig functions? Well, we've kind of done this, but then it says of any angle. Now that means we've moved away from just the special angles. Of any, that means a 32 degree angle. Okay, which eventually we'll work to. Okay, we won't necessarily get all to that today, but um, first, I want you guys to read this. Just read it to yourself.
Okay, explain to your neighbor what it means. All right. Hey, let's go ahead and wrap up here. Let's talk about this. Hey, this right here, all this is saying is if I want to find the radius, I could take and drop an altitude here. And I would then know if I, if I take this triangle and just kind of make it a little bigger over here, I would then know that the radius is equal to, well, if this coordinate is x, y, that means this length right here is x, and this is y. It would mean that the radius is just the Pythagorean theorem, right? x squared plus y squared equals r squared, <laughs> right? You're just taking the square root of that. So if you have x squared plus y squared equals r squared, the first, after you, after you, I guess after you find x squared and y squared, that you'd have to take the square root. That is all that's saying. So you've been doing that for the past couple of years. That's nothing new. If you don't know the radius, that's how you find it. What this is saying is sine theta is equal to y over r. Well, remember this picture? Sine theta, or in this case theta is 30, sine of 30 is equal to y over 1. Well, 1 represents r. So if r changes to 4 all of a sudden, this becomes... That's all that's saying. You know that. Okay? That would mean if really if I wanted to find y, I could think of that as r sine theta is equal to y. And for those of you that had me or Mr. Vogel last year, we talked about that. When we did vectors in the unit circle, we told you to find those coordinates using r sine theta, r cosine theta. If you look back to chapter 11, in your geometry stuff, for those of you who still have it, I know some of you read it daily. Okay, if you look back to chapter 11, you would see your, those formulas. You did that last year. Okay? This cosine is x over r. That's all we're dealing with here. The radius would then become 4. Okay? Tangent is y over x, which remember is the same thing as sine over cos. Notice x can't be 0 because you can't divide by 0. And here, cosecant is just the reciprocal of sine. You flip that, and y can't be 0 because you can't divide by 0. Secant, the reciprocal of cosine. Flip it. x can't be 0. And tangent, the reciprocal of um, tan or excuse me, cotangent, reciprocal of tangent. Flip it. y can't be 0. Why didn't they say r can't be 0 here? Yeah, the radius can never be zero. Otherwise, you don't have a circle. Dude. Okay? All right. Hey, we're going to skip. Really, if I had you do exploration one, that would be very redundant after you've done the unit circle. So we're going to skip that. But I want you to look to page 254. On page 254, there's some different vocab terms. One's the unit circle. Remember, that has a radius of one. Okay, that is not the whole definition, but remember as a radius of 1. Quadrantal angle and reference angle. We're about to talk about reference angle, which helped me lead into quadrantal angle. The other stuff on this page, note here. Okay, um, by the way, Hallie, this, was, this is one of your right triangles now. That's how you draw it on that side. Okay, and here, when we're dealing with the unit circle, and by the way, if you ever wanted to drop a right triangle here, just be like that, which you're going to start seeing some reference angles with. Okay, we've talked about all of this stuff. Now, please note that that's always true in a unit circle. Because radius is 1, that would mean whatever your x value is squared plus whatever your y value is squared, even if those are negative coordinates, will equal 1. Because you can always make right triangles. 
What's kind of weird is when you're dealing with reference angles. So on page 255, I want you to read about reference angles. Okay? Kind of talk with your neighbor about what they mean, please. What you think they mean. Okay. Hey, guys. A reference angle. When we're dealing with a reference angle, if Let's say, for instance, theta. Let's say, for instance, theta is 120 degrees. Its reference angle, okay, the reference angle for theta, theta prime, is equal to 180 degrees. So they're taking this entire amount. And they're saying this angle, this portion right here, is equal to 180 minus whatever theta is. Which means, in other words, what would complete the half circle? How much? 60. That's the reference angle. Okay. So it's an acute angle that completes or brings your, your um, angle to the nearest 180 mark, if that makes sense. Okay. Because we're referencing from our y, our y axis, or excuse me, from our x axis, yeah. That way we can draw our right triangles down to the x axis. Okay, so the right triangle, you could drop a right triangle then right here. That's why we use reference angles. That's one of the reasons there. Okay, we can drop a right triangle here. But this reference angle here, if that, for instance, was 225, the reference angle we'd subtract off a chunk. Okay. It'd be theta minus that 180. All right. Okay, so let's try some of this. Let's take a look at page 256. On page 256, it says evaluate the six trig functions. Now I want to. I'm going to go through just kind of walking through this. We're not going to get all the trig functions down here, but if I'm trying to evaluate these trig functions, what am I going to have to do? I don't know. Do we have any side lengths? Oh, yeah. yeah, we know x. x is 2. We go over 2 and up 6. Do we know the hypotenuse? No. Well, yeah, you can find it. Yeah, you can find it, right? The hypotenuse is 2 root 10, right? So a squared plus b squared equals h squared, I guess if you want to think of it that way, or r squared. Okay, so 4 plus 36. So h is root 40, which is 2 root 10. Okay? Now, that means this is the hypotenuse. This is the in terms of our angle, that 2 is our adjacent, and the 6 is our opposite. You could then evaluate the trig function. You could find sine, for instance. You would go through and list all of them. Sine of theta would be 6 over the hypotenuse, so opposite over hypotenuse. You reduce, that becomes 3 and 1. So that becomes 3 root 10 over 10. Okay? Please note you are using these coordinates. So when I do that for number 2, by the way, you'd have to do all of those, all six of them there. And I'm not going to walk through all six because I think you can do that. Okay? But when you're dealing the, with this one, your triangle is right here which means this length is this can't have a negative length. This is 3, this is 4, this is 5. That's the re that's the triangle though, right? So 3 4 5, but when I go to actually figure my trig functions, when I when I figure out cosine and sine Sine is 
sine of theta here is going to be negative 4, right? Opposite here, or excuse me, negative 3, that's our y value, over 5. Now you, that's where it's a bit different, because you this y value is your sine value, or your opposite. When you plug things in, that's your adjacent. It doesn't make sense when you're putting them on a triangle to call them negative values, but they are negative values. Otherwise, if you put positive values here, if I say 3 fifths, that puts me up in this quadrant. Everyone understand what I'm saying there? Because 3, 5 is over here somewhere. That's why we have to make sure we use the negative values when they exist. So you're using coordinates there. Okay, any questions there? All right, let's talk about the six trig functions here. Okay, if I am dealing with this angle for theta, theta is negative 90, use the circle, unit circle. I want everyone to put a dot, or actually sketch out the negative 90 degree angle for theta on a unit circle, or just coordinate plane like that. Okay, negative 90 goes to right there. What's the coordinate? Zero, negative one, right? Okay. And so sine, sine theta is equal to, this is sine. This is cosine, right? Sine is equal to negative one. Cosine is equal to zero. What's tan? Sine over cosine. Negative 1 over 0, which is 0. What's the reciprocal of 0? Cotangent. You flip negative 1 over 0, you get... Oh, hold on. Negative 1 over 0 isn't 0. That's undefined, man. Now, when we flip it, we get 0 over negative 1, which is 0. What's the reciprocal of 0? Yeah, secant's going to be undefined. Because when you flip it, you get 0 on the bottom. And what's the reciprocal of negative 1? Negative 1 over 1 is negative 1. All right. Hey, last piece we're going to get to is number 5. Negative 310. Sketch that angle, please. us to about right there almost a full circle man in fact if we would have went how much farther would have given us a full circle 50 degrees that happens to be your reference angle pretty cool huh that's all you're doing there your reference angle is 50 hey if you did this one by the way just so you're clear if I'm dealing with what's a full rotation how many pi 2 pi, hey, this would be, just think of 2 pi as 20 pi over 10. Everyone agree there? This is a 10. So that's 20 pi over 10. What's that make this? 25. What's it make if I get to here? be 30. Oh, that's our bell. All right. There's our 27 pi over 10, by the way, and this would bring us up to 3 pi over 10. All right. We'll have to pick up on this one Monday.